This is an orange spice margarita, perfect for my guest today, Titus Macon. Woo woo. A singer songwriter and actor on TV shows such as The Path, Starcrossed, Pretty Little Liars, Glee, and the new show he just started filming, The Rookie. When I asked Titus what he liked to drink, he said none of the dark stuff. Right. Tequila, it is. To make the orange spice margarita, we need fresh lime juice. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh. that's gonna be tart. It's, oh, it's shoot. just lime juice. Fresh orange juice. I literally just wanna eat everything. That's out. Yeah, you want an orange? Simple syrup. Ooh, I'm impressed. A thick rim of cinnamon, sugar, and salt. Casamigos, of course. I'm using the Reposado for this cocktail. Garnish with an orange half moon and a cinnamon stick. Ooh. The orange spice margarita. Maybe a pinch of cinnamon as well for good measure. I'm Riker Lynch, and this is Glass Half Full. Hmm? All right. Yo. Dude. Uh. Titus Macon. What's up, man? Are you going? Are you going with the junior? No, we dropped that. You dropped the junior. You got rid of that. Okay, because that was yeah. like the thing on Glee. I remember it was always like on the call sheet. That's because for a while I was like, let me be distinctly different than my dad. Right. But then I was like, my dad's not in the industry, so why does it matter? Uh huh. So then I dropped it because it's easier. Because like some people would just say Titus Macon, some people say Titus Macon Junior. Right. And I was like, if you just drop it, music and acting is just Titus Macon. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's one thing, and it's a very unique name. As it is, so I, you know, I, I feel like the the junior thing kind of made me think of Robert Downey Jr., which was kind of cool. That's the only reason I kept it for a while because right. I was like, Robert Downey Jr. has a junior. That's it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, as far as Titus Macon yeah, Jr. That, that we know. Um, as far as we know, I guess there's probably tons of juniors. I'm sure out there's there. a bunch. But Cuba Gooding Jr. There you go. But no, I dropped mine. I right. don't need it. Okay. And like you said, like a lot of people are like sweet enough to be like, oh, Titus is a cool name. And they never really say the full thing anyway. Yeah. So it's like, whatever. Yeah, Titus is a great name. Yeah. No, thanks. It's almost Riker. as cool as Riker. Yeah, I was about to say, I was like, Riker is a dope name. <laughs> literally, um, at a casting, this, the casting director goes, literally, has no idea that we're in cahoots or know each other. Really? I don't even know if she was talking about you specifically, but she was like, yeah, she was like, you got such a cool name, Titus, where's it come from? And I'm like t telling her about it. Uh -huh. And she was like, I heard another cool name uh, the other day. She was like, Riker. And I was like, I have a friend named Riker. And she was like, oh my gosh. She was like, I love that name. She was like, those are the two best names. Yeah, dude. I would have to And here we are that. sitting next to each other. Mm -hmm. Well, so we first met on the set of Glee mm -hmm. in, was it 2009? That sounds about right. Or was yeah. it 2010? Like 2010. It was the end of 2010. Yep, 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 yep. Because yep. I had just turned 19, like the day we were shooting. Yeah. Or maybe it was the second day we were shooting, because we did Hey Soul Sister. Mm hmm And then we had the scenes at the school. Yep. And it was my it was literally my birthday. Dang. I turned 19. I didn't, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Dang, that's cool. That's yeah, you, were, you were one of the first people that I met. And, um, that was on loud. <laughs> like, bro, bro, you're no, blonde, well, cool people, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember us um, going into like the first vocal rehearsal or something, and uh, you, I remember you coming over and being like, you, you know how to dance, right? And, and I was like, Cause yeah. Because I've seen you at that casting. Yeah, you, you remember we had seen it something before, and yeah. so you were like, uh, yeah, you're like, I dance too. So yeah. you and I were like the ones that... Had rhythm. Had really, yeah. We had we had the rhythm, even yeah. though we were just doing step touches mm -hmm. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. Which, which, you know, challenging for some, not so much for others. But yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but even though um, I, our parts were were fairly small, but that was such yeah. a fun time. And I I look back on those mm -hmm. times and I just think about how much fun we had. Like we Dude. had so much fun. Honestly, that's the way to get like. A Hollywood career started. That was like, that was like crash course in like getting a taste of a lot, mm -hmm. but not being like jaded by a lot. Yeah, not being you know overwhelmed. I mean? or exactly, like that, not yeah. being like the forefront, but getting to see everything at the max. Like that's dope. It was literally the biggest, one of the biggest shows. It that was. Fox ever had. It, yeah, I like, mean, it, that, general, when but, we joined the show, it, it had yeah. to be the biggest show on mm -hmm. television at the time. Which is just cool. Yeah, it was super fun. It was like a little frat. Yeah. Yeah. It was dope. And then we went on the tour. Heck yeah. And um, that that was so much fun as well. I mean, mm -hmm. we, it was so many memories. Yeah. But I, I want to get into more of uh, your sort of career before <laughs> that or or yeah. just life before Glee because <laughs> sure, I didn't sure. know you before then. So True, huh? I, I read online um, <laughs> two different things. You, were you born in Arizona or Hawaii? 
Hawaii. You were born in Hawaii. Born okay. Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You grew up in Arizona, but you were also moving around because of your dad. Military. Okay. So it's like Hawaii happened, then Germany happened, then Colorado happened. You lived in Germany. Four years. Uh, North when, Carolina. When, where, where in Colorado? Because that's where I'm Yeah, at. Colorado Springs. We were in Colorado oh, okay. Springs. But I was only there for like maybe a year and a half, two years. So it's like, I don't, I don't remember much. I was in kindergarten when I was in Colorado. Right. And then, uh, yeah, a bunch of other places. North, uh, North Carolina, Washington, Georgia. Wow. And then Arizona, which okay. was high school. So Arizona is kind of like the main memory of childhood. That and Georgia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like a lot of my memories. Uh, that and Georgia. And Germany. Germany was like through third grade. So it's like, I kind of have that like, whew, right? that like, oh, I remember riding my bike and like hanging out with people on the streets. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's where I started gymnastics. So I remember like all of that, mm-hmm. like, cause I did gymnastics for like nine years. Gymnastics um, was Arizona? Started in Germany. Started, in, oh wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I continued, cause I started like just doing like basic training, like basic classes. Cause I was like flipping in the street and by chance, the German guy who lived across the street was a gymnastics coach. Oh, really? And he saw me like trying to do cartwheels in the street. And he was like, hey. St- I can show you how to really do this. For a fee. And he got it. <laughs> because I'm, yeah, anyway. Right. But um, yeah, then I ended up in Arizona, and then New York, then California. And then and when you got to New York, yeah. you, were, is, you were doing uh, some performing arts school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts. And what, what, did you have like a major? <laughs> no, so um, with the conservatory, it's, like, uh, it's almost like a trade school. So it's like you literally graduate from high school, or you can go at any age, honestly, but it's like a university, you can go at any age, but mm-hmm. I graduated from high school, you go to school, it's just specifically arts, so it's like, we had dance classes, acting classes, on-camera classes, there was a, um, a theater program, the, the, an extra year that was more money that I didn't do, uh-huh. but um, yeah, it was like everything, um, and it's specifically just the arts, so what you can do is after that, you can transfer to a university, and like pretty much your major's done mm-hmm. and you just have to take core classes. Right. But I just came here instead of finishing college. Gotcha. So you just did the training and then you were like, now nah, I'm going to go do the yeah, work. Because I already did my major, which is, is what I would have done at a university. Right. So I was like, cool. So were you doing this at the same time you were doing the gymnastics stuff with the Knicks? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you done studied up, boy. Yeah, dude. Well, well, we had talked about that oh, previously. Okay. But thank you. I, I did. I did do. I did do a lot of research. I watched all your Pretty Little Liars episodes. I watched uh, oh, cool. Star Crossed, oh. and I watched uh, all the, the Path episodes. What are? You're, but they're you're, still coming out. Yeah, right? yeah. There's. I think there's only like six out. Yeah. So and, like, and you're on the whole season. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so it just gets beefier. Right now I'm like the charming guy who's in a love situation. Right. As you see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah um. That. Anyway, but um. Yeah, that, that's pretty much how it ended up here. And then, yeah, New York was the New York Knicks stuff. So the whole time I was in school there, I literally was flipping through the newspaper because I was like, I need a job. And I was like, uh-huh. I don't want to re- work at a restaurant. I was just like, no. And I was flipping through, like, uh, backstage. You know backstage? Y'all know backstage? No, I know. Backstage is like a, I don't know, it's like an actor's entertainer, entertainment newspaper where you have job opportunities. Right. They it's kind of like, like okay. Actors Access or something, but like New York version. I don't know. Gotcha. Anyway, so I was looking through there, and they were like, can you tumble? Like a big article. <laughs> and I had this guy doing a backflip. And I was like, oh. You're like, hell yes, I can. Yeah. And I literally just went to an open call for it. And it was just a bunch of dudes. Uh, and there was this long blue strip. And they were just having people do their best passes one at a time. And we just kept circling around. Like you do a pass, they circle around. There's just like these like people taking notes. Wow. And we were just doing passes, doing passes. And you would see what somebody does, uh, see what they did. And then you would try to do better. Uh-huh. Like, what, did, cool so thing. what did you do? Well, I... Opened up with a uh, <laughs> round off back hamstring, back hamstring, back hamstring, double full. Double full. And I like said, a, like, is that a double full? Do twist? I have the job? Huh? Is that a double full yeah, twist? Double full wow. twist. So you did um, three back handsprings and then okay. Because you had to take up the space. Of yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I would have done it after one to get it over with, but like I was like, well, I'm just, stretch try, it I'm just out. trying to yeah get right. my head around it. But then, exactly what you did. as arrogant as I sound, I was like, <laughs> great, nailed that. And then the dude after me literally does like. No hand, like they're called whips, back mm. whips. So round off, no hand, no hand, no hand, double back flip. And I was like, okay. I was like, mm, all right, got to whip out the guns today. Huh? Uh-huh. Um, so I literally couldn't beat that. But essentially they needed a, a, a great, uh, like four or five guys anyway. Ended up being one of them. Yeah, I worked for them for two years. It was dope. Got free tickets to home games. Nice. Got to bring like classmates and stuff. I'm like, yo, you want to watch a Knicks Celtics game today? And then um, 
They also let me sing national anthems. That was the first time I sang. You sang the national anthem? Yeah, for one of the Knicks Celtics games. It was the first time I ever sang in front of a crowd. Let oh, alone just wait, just, just a, a crowd. crowd? So uh, that's not true. I did a talent show in high school. Okay, and you sang there. But this yeah. national anthem is obviously your first arena singing. Yeah. And how and how old were you? I was. 17? 17. 17. Wow. 17, 18. Did you know that you liked singing before that? Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. Like, I didn't even have, like, an acting bug until, like, maybe my senior year of high school right before I went to that school. Really? Oh, yeah. Because my sister acted, and I was all music and all dance. And that was, like, my goal was the background dance for Missy Elliott and Usher. That's all I would talk about. Really? Legit. Like, okay. I would watch your videos. You know, Missy would always have, like, kid dancers. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, yeah, Mom, yeah. And I just wanted to be on Disney Channel just to dance. Like, not even for acting purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, because I knew that all those kids got, like, music videos and stuff. Right, and I was right, like, right. yeah, that'd be dope. Anyway, so. Um, well, you did one of those at one point, right? That came later down the road, regardless, yeah. So that, when you did that, did, yeah. it, did it feel like I, 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 mean, no. I did what I, what I set kind of, like, what I have accomplished one of my goals? Kind of, but it wasn't like the full goal. Hold right. on. I'll, I'll get there. Because okay. that, that, it was tricky. Because it technically happened twice, but it still didn't happen on Disney Channel. Do you know what I mean? Like, mine was ABC Family. Oh, That, okay. that musical movie thing with Lucy. Was on Which, ABC oh, Family. that was uh, the Christmas one. No, that was no, Cinderella. Cinderella story. Cinderella story, yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah. So I wanted to do that. Uh, wanted to dance and sing. And then... I would go to my sister's plays. They would be so boring. And I'd be like, bro. <laughs> and I, my parents would make me. And I'd be like, uh. Well, my sister was always super good, so it was mm-hmm. fine. Then I saw Step Up. Mm. And they went to a school where they were acting, singing, and dancing. And right. I was like, whoa. Didn't know that existed. Mm-hmm. Then I looked up the school I went to and auditioned and got in. Wow. And that's when acting started, which is like, after, like right at the end of my senior year of high school. Wow, that's very cool. I always yeah. figured acting was like the first thing for you. And people think that. People... When I got out here, people don't know that I came out here ma- for acting as well, because I knew it was a smart place to be for acting, but music was already slightly moving, because mm-hmm. I was a part of a boy band. A part of a boy band? Okay, that I didn't find in my uh, research. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's very good. We are called uh, A-Game. <laughs> A-Game. Yep, and it stands for this. <laughs> a gentleman always meets excellence. A gentleman always meets excellence. And it was like three guys. It was me, this Panamanian dude, and this white dude. So we covered the basis of ethnicity, uh-huh. right? Um, and uh, it was pretty much like, uh, kind of like, so Boys to Men's manager was trying to like revamp everything and get like a new boy brand. Boy uh-huh. brand. So it was us three. And it fell through and all of us split off. Like the white guy ended up booking Taylor Swift's tour and like went off dancing with her. The other guy got a deal with Omarion at the time, who was like bigger back then. And they were like in the studio all the time. And then that's when I booked Glee. And okay. then it all crumbled. And all of us went separate ways. Yeah. So I, I stuck with acting more. And then I wasn't making music much until like now again. Right. And then, um, yeah. And then all that stuff. But people don't know that it was originally music. Originally, yeah, I had no idea. I got an agent and then acting kind of took over, which is fine because it was a win-win. It took me a long time to get my confidence back, like musically, because I didn't, like, I was watching so many of my friends that I started in music with, uh-huh. like, f- go further themselves in music. And I was acting and I was like, oh, shoot, I haven't sang in a while. And, I was, and, and keep in mind, like I said, the only thing I had done live was that national anthem. Right. And then, like, I had done a few studio sessions. And then that manager dude, and then this group that fell apart. So I was like, I didn't really have practice. And you know me, like, most of the first couple of years, like, I wouldn't sing that much. Like, I would sing, but, like, more, like, sheepish, sheepishly. Yeah, How do you yeah, say yeah, that? yeah. It was yeah. almost singing to yourself. Yeah, and, and yeah, like, yeah. I, it was, like, really just the first couple episodes. I definitely I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, Tyler's going to sing. Like, hey, everybody pick a part. And I'm like, ah, and I'm like, <laughs> I'll sing, no, no, I'll sing it, Riker. I'll sing the melody with Riker. Oh, no. And, um... Like, it, it's honestly within the last few years since I've been able to, like, actually make my own music mm-hmm. and, like, do my own shows and stuff like that that I've been, like, finding my voice again. Right. Because I honestly, and my friends around me were like, yeah, you, you actually don't sing that much until I was like, screw that. I'm singing again. Like, yeah. who cares if people think I'm just an actor? Like, screw that. Anyway, so... I jumped all over the place, but here I am. 
you know. Well, I admire that because you, you know, even though you're having, you know, pretty good success, especially like with the the show, The Path is obviously a really big show right now. Yeah, dope show. And you're having really good success success with acting, but you're still like, yeah, that's great. I'm doing, I'm loving that, but I'm gonna do the music thing as well. Yeah. And you've uh, you just released. Suicide is that mm-hmm, the latest one? Mm-hmm, I like that yeah, one. Jump, jump, I really you. like Good Love. I know. Yeah, yeah. That, that. that one's a, a pretty good jam. We yeah. were playing it actually with the crew today hey. um, while we were getting the lights set up and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What uh, do you like? One of the art forms better? You know what, dude? Let me put it to you like this, because I get that question all the time. Mm-hmm. Actually, at that the recent show I had. Um, there was a music agent from APA there, and after the show, she pulled me aside and she was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> no, like I can't. We're meeting, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking, I'm talking to you next week, like, oh my gosh. She was like, do you, are you interested in going on tour? And I was like, duh, like yeah, well, heck yeah. And she was like, I have to ask, because some independent artists, you know, I said in their ways, you know, like that. And I was like, great. But her question, she was like, so, I know you act, but like, do you, like, um, she was like, oh, uh, What's your um, preference? Pr- like your main, your main focus is it music or acting? Okay. And I was like, honestly, realistically speaking, if I had to choose, like had to, right? Like gun to your head, you have to choose. It'd be music because own message, own own yeah. every. I get to put my own mm-hmm. self into it. I'm not playing a character. I don't have to choose if I'm willing to do this or if I want to say that or if like and yeah, people are addressing me like that. Like I get to express myself. Fully as me, like mm-hmm. literally to the max, from what I'm wearing to what I'm saying to what I'm, how I'm dancing on stage, how I'm talking. Like I literally get to be me fully. Realistically speaking, Jared Leto is goals. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Go on tour, do your music, come back, do a solid role. You're respected in both crafts. You step here, boom. You step away, boom. Yeah. Will Smith was like that at one point. Exactly. Too. So there's definitely and Nick Jonas is, is doing a good job right now like he's doing films mm-hmm. here and there and he's um he's doing his music music's great and I don't hate him as an actor and I love him as an artist yeah I, I definitely feel that there's plenty of room to do both you know there's there's I agree. so many there's so many ways to consume entertainment mm-hmm. nowadays like you there's plenty of of room and and, and space for for t- to do whatever you yeah know, you can you can go off and you know you could go dance for the Knicks again if you yep. felt like it. Like you can do it and all. That, and that's why I, I like, it's kind of frustrating when people don't, not when they ask the question, but when they're like, so, I mean, you got to like focus on one more. Yeah. Another. I'm like, I, I get why you're saying that, but like at the same time, like, no, no you, re- t- you really don't. It's, yeah. it's sort of like the, the thing I used to get, um, you know, like, oh, well, you should go to college so you have a backup plan. Was, no, no, I'm not gonna. I don't need a backup yeah. plan because if there's a backup, you can. Uh, Jim Carrey said uh, said it really great. His dad was really, really funny, mm-hmm. and his dad. He said his dad could have been a comedian if he really wanted to, but he chose the safe route and he became an accountant or whatever, and he got fired. Mm-hmm. And the moral of the story is, you can fail at, at what your you back. don't want. That's so true. So like, fine, I'll do my backup. And what if I fail at that? Yeah. Then now I'm just a sitting duck who never pursued my first passion. Exactly. That's so true. no, Ooh, I, come I, on. I, yes, but I preach, Riker. <laughs> and I, I admire that uh, that you're doing both. I think it's thank you. And that's fantastic. honestly, y'all are prime examples of that. Thank like you. watching you and Ross, man, because y'all are the two that do both. Mm-hmm. Um, and technically I was too, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just like really cool seeing that because I'm like, heck yeah, bro. Like go to your audition, shoot that film, go on stage. Like, why not? Yeah. Why it's, not? It's just love for entertaining really. Yeah. You know? it, absolutely. Doesn't, it doesn't really matter what form it is. Now, if you're not good and you're just doing it for like the sa- like the namesake of it, different story, but like. You're, you're actually good at both. Like, why not? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like if like it's like when actors direct as well, or yeah. if like actors produce as well, mm-hmm. or write as well. It's like, how do you have time to do that? You don't ask them which one they prefer. Like, yeah, exactly. They're just they yeah. Just do they're, it. they're both. They're all part of the same sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I uh, I love that you're doing that, man. Thanks, brother. Um, I want to also talk about, uh, and if you don't want to talk, but I I admire. Another thing a lot about you is that you get really, really close 
to these huge movies, and we've talked about this. You know where you're going. And if you don't want to talk about it, we don't <laughs> have do. to. But okay, I okay. think the fact that you continue, you're continuing to go out there and and try and try to make it happen <laughs> with you know obviously the the TV show success, but the movie side, you know, a little project we called Red Cup. The fact that you were down to it was down to you and the guy that booked the job two times. Like what? Mm. What's what's that like? Oh, like is it is it frustrating or is it like no one of these is gonna land? You know what I mean? Is it encouraging that you get that far? Who? Okay, I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, packed in that. It's all of those. Honestly, like it's like it's it's discouraging but encouraging, mm-hmm. and it's hopeful yet like daunting. It's a lot, and I'll and I'll tell you why. So with um, um, the first Star Wars, like. The first one I was up for that John Boyega got. Mm-hmm. That actually was an easier blow because I know John and like we've met years before that and like right. we're like cool with each other. So it was kind of like one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, that sucks. We're like, heck yeah, John. And at the time, we also didn't know what the role, uh, how big the role was. Mm-hmm. So it was like, like they gave us like the fake sides and like all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, it's all the, the hidden. Actually, no, yeah. there was one real scene. They told oh, us it was really? fake, but. One of the scenes that we were testing with was in the movie. Oh. Yeah. Like, actually, it was the scene where, like, in the trailer a long time ago, he would pop up in the frame. He was in the desert. He was like, <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That was one of our audition scenes. But they were like, yeah, it's just dummy sides. Uh-huh. Anyway. Um, so, um, yeah. It was, like, cool. And I was like, all right. Because I'm also thinking at the time that, like, it's a small role in this film that probably is huge because it's unnamed, but we don't know what it is. But we kind of know. Who knows? Right. Um, okay. So, w- when it hit me. Is when a yearish later, a year and a half later, almost, and the billboards are literally John, just like. Wait, like, so you didn't know it was Star Wars until a year and a half later? No, I knew it was Star Wars after the second round okay. because I I was going, we were going back and forth with JJ, like because he was already in England meeting with John in person, but because they were already in pre-production there, all of my stuff was over the phone with him, mm-hmm. and like so he would just relay messages on like what to change in scenes and stuff like that. So I knew at that point, but I didn't know how big the role was still. I'm still right. thinking it's like maybe like I don't know, just yeah, 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 one yeah, of the homies. It's like dudes. yeah, great. Wait, wait, so back up a little bit. So yeah. you go in. So the first odd. Let's yeah, let's mm-hmm, just go mm-hmm. step by step. Mm-hmm. What what is the first thing you do? For, so, for Star I, Wars. A tape. Because they weren't even seeing... Yeah, yeah. Just like, self-tape. Baby people like myself. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, self-tape. Goes and, gr- and you just shot that in the back of your... In your, in your house, in your apartment? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, actually, I was filming um, Starcross. It was back during that. So we were finishing so Starcross. So you were in New Orleans? I was in New Orleans. Self-taped in the hotel. Okay. Or in my apartment. Wherever I was in that time. Um, and, uh, yeah. Read one of my castmates, and she actually had an audition for Daisy Ridley's role, which we didn't know was that either. Right. But I put her on tape when we shot the pilot for Star Cross. Wow. And then at the end of the season, I went on tape for the other role. So that's how long they were in casting. Like, Dang. insane. Um, so anyway. The first thing is uh, self tape. Yep, self tape. Then I get back to town, and like this is back like, in Los Angeles. Back in Los Angeles. So it's a few weeks later. Like, things are moving so slow through this casting process. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, uh, uh, they really liked you for Red Cup. They want you to come in. So I went in with casting. Met literally the same thing again in person. Great. Same scenes? Same scenes that I had the first time. Mm, one new... No, same scenes at this point. Same scenes. And then they were like, okay, well, they sent your tapes to producers. Everybody likes it. Boom. So I had to go back in. They gave us new scenes. Went back in again, and they were like, so okay... So this is the fourth time? This is the third. Third. At this time. At this point. And uh, this all is like stretched out over... Dog on six months, maybe. Wow. Like mm, five months. But it's the longest casting process yeah. ever. Um, and I'm like, okay, cool. And I had forgotten about it. And they're like, oh, shoot, come back in for Red Cup. Great. Um, and people are like, oh my gosh, you're going in for Red Cup? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I heard this like some big thing. And I was like, I don't know, dude, it's called Red Cup. I'm thinking it's a party movie because it's called Red Cup. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, whatever. So we're doing that. And by the content, you could tell it's like sci fi and like all that stuff. Whatever. Right. But um, go in. And they bring me back in with notes with those same scene from JJ because they were like, and I didn't realize how far along I was in the process. Like, I'm thinking like, okay, they're just dwindling down and we're like, I don't know. Like, this is 
technically my second time in the room. Mm -hmm. So I was like, maybe it's just like another session. I don't know, like a work session. So I go back in and they're like, yeah, and they had notes from JJ and JJ is like, da -da 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 -da, all this stuff, do this, boom. So we do that. And then they call with negotiations to my manager. So my manager calls me and she's like, well, they want to, uh, they want to screen test you on, uh, uh, Red Cup. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, that's dope. As Star Wars Episode 7. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're like, yeah. And so we uh, started working out deals. And like, obviously, you know how that works where they're like talking money. They're talking money. And you're hearing really? how much this is about to be. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, is that okay? And you're like, yep. <laughs> I will take that. That would be great. Um, and they're like working out flights. Flying over to, because we're going to uh, screen test. Um, in London. In London. In like all, all of us glory. Like they already had to ship build like in all of it. Like we were going to be screen testing in. Right. Like, it was going to be insane. Anyway, so they're working that out. And then um, the next day I get a call and they're like, well, John goes in a day before me in person. because in, in London. He's already there. Right. Which I mean, I love John. He's an amazing actor. But it was just like, dang, that, like, yeah. that works out in his favor because you can like kind of vibe people. Mm -hmm. Um he goes in day before me. They're like, they love Titus so much, but they, they feel like they want to they wanna go with John before I flew out. So I didn't even get a chance to fly there to do it because gotcha. they liked what John did so much. Uh -huh. um, so they just canceled my stuff. And uh, yeah, so that was the first one. Well, at least you didn't fly all the way there that's and true. then get the It would have been a free word, trip you know and I would have I mean? like been able to meet JJ in person. It kind of would have been dope, though. That's true. That's, yeah. the, that's the, the, uh, the glass half full uh, right. so way to look at it. But with Han Solo, it was an even more... Young Han Solo one, mm -hmm. um, even more daunting w process. Was this the um, one uh, that? Um, is this the childish Gambino character? What's his character? name? Donald Glover. Donald yeah. Glover, yeah. Yeah. So this is the one he okay. got. Um, this and that is. Uh, oh, Lando. Lando. Cal yeah, this, yeah. So this is the Lando. Like, oh, yes. Lando Calrissian. Yes, character. this is that role. Okay. Um, yeah. So that that one, same way, except even further. So we actually did. I did chemistry reads and everything with Alden, who they have for Han Solo. Solo. Okay. So me and him met, hung out, did our thing, went back and forth. The casting was, took forever for that one. That was like, obviously, last year, mm -hmm. right? Um, that was like two years ago, I feel like. Was it? I think so, because I went in for Han. Okay. Oh, right. We mm -hmm. talked about, we were talking about this in your pool. Yeah, I in my that. old house. Yeah. yeah. yeah so this was after a long that time conversation, ago. casting still lasted for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think I went in two more, two more times after that. Okay. I don't remember where I was in this like, story when I was in the program. I think you were like maybe a callback. Yeah, so it was most. like two more times after that. Because I went in, met with the directors, hung out with them, came back with them and uh, Chemistry Red with Alden. Uh -huh. And then we just waited. Waited, 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 waited. And then we got word that Donald was, has an offer out. And they were like, well, they haven't offered him a contract. Like, you guys are at the same point. Um, but, yes, he is in the loop. Um, which... Probably he was from the beginning, probably. But, mm -hmm. you know, who cares? Like, it's just... That one was more so like, wow. Like, I knew what to expect. Like, I'm just honored to have to have been the other option to Donald yeah. Glover. Because he was killing it. He was winning awards for ATL, yeah. for his music, for like... I'm like, who wouldn't book him? Mm -hmm. Like, that's that would be the smart choice. Do you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so that was cool. So I'm, I'm fully prepared for this one. I wasn't prepared for the John Boyega one because I didn't realize I was like, oh shoot, I literally was about to be everywhere. Yeah, like, you didn't realize you were gonna be yeah. like the the man in, in that episode. Right, and yeah. I didn't realize that there would have been two more films after that, three more films, mm -hmm. however many they're making. Um, so it was like, that one hurt a little bit and it stung and I was like, oh shoot, dang, that sucks. And it's everywhere. People have their t-shirts, they're walking around, it's just John's face. And I was like, and yeah. I didn't even want it for that. It was just crazy because I have to keep seeing it. And it's like yes. a constant reminder that you're just like, didn't get down. Yep. Didn't, didn't get down. <laughs> you know? so huge. Yeah. Um, so how do you yeah. how do you like look at that situation and and continue like like when the set when the when the, the Han Solo one came up how do you, how do you you know be optimistic and and still give it your all after that experience? Honestly, that's that's what I think is so incredible. Dude, it's hard. It really was hard. Like as far as like not like. Because it is kind of like every other audition, but at the same time, you know the weight that it holds because it's freaking Star Wars. Yeah, it's you know just I mean? huge. Um, but at the same time, what kept me afloat was like doing a good job for the office. Mm -hmm. So my manager's like, look, I get it. Whew, yes, this is another Star Wars. It's another situation. But the better you do in the office, 
and they cast huge films all the time, the better that is for you. So yeah. if you can go make new fans, new supporters, great. So it's like, I always just put my best foot forward because, and it did work out because directly, right after Donald uh, got this coming up Star Wars, they came right back with an offer for a film that ended up falling through. The casting office was like, hey, because yeah. they had seen me for the last four or five months in and out of the office. Yeah. So they were like, hey, Titus would be great for this. Like, and it was like an offer. But then it fell through. And then they called me back in for another film. I don't even know what they're making. It was for, uh, it might be coming out, I don't know, for Dungeons and Dragons. But uh -huh. I didn't get that. Um, uh, but yeah, so they, they've been great since then. And it did its job. So, I mean, best case scenario. Just well, you're going to land one like that. You have to know that that you're getting so freaking close and you're you're going in so many times. Dude, you're, like any day now, you're just going to land that huge one. And I bet you <laughs> that it's going to be you're going to be like, this is the one I was supposed to get. True. That's you know true. What I mean, you're yeah, gonna, yeah. like, it's going to be way it's going to you're going to feel better yeah. about this one. It, you, you're going to be more excited. It'll be everything when it happens it'll just feel like this was definitely just waiting for me yeah and and it's hard being patient for that when you, yeah. you keep getting like little taste mm -hmm. and you're like oh i know i just touched it and then somebody's like hats like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and you're just like oh dude like oh just come on already just for the sake of being able to constantly work because like there's like this that that little baby threshold that a lot of our friends have crossed in the acting world where it's like if you can just jump over that little line, it's just like, okay, I'll be working for a while. Yep. But like right now, I'm like right behind the line where it's like, I still kind of have to like you still throw a lot of punches from my meat. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm fighting for it. And as opposed to like, oh, we know that guy. Let's just call him for this. Yeah. I'm still kind of like Let's slightly proving myself in each office every time. Mm -hmm. But whatever. I mean, I'll gladly do that until the right role comes along. Yeah, and, and you're you're working for it. You know, you're putting in the hard work, it's not being handed to you. So your you know, your work ethic and when it comes time to, to be on set at four AM, you right. know, you've put the work in, you put the work you have great work ethic, so it's just gonna be like, Yeah, here we go. Like no big deal. Well thanks, man. Yeah. So how was that orange? Bro, that first one was amazing, but this one like they grow, soaked up in this. They alcohol. grow in my backyard. That's what? that's how fresh these these are. Yeah. So like like the path or or, or or anything I guess. How much is a how much is a director influencing like the either the choices that you're making the um, just the way that you you kind of go about your character or do you just kind of come in like after you know once once you've got the part do you kind of come in and you're like okay I know I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Well, are you talking about specifically with the path, like how that situation worked, or just in general? Sure, we'll start with the path. Um, they were super trusting. Like I prepared, came in. That was started with a tape too, mm -hmm. because they were in New York. So sent tape, boom, came in. Uh, actually, no, the next round I did was right after the tape was chemistry read. Chemistry yeah. read. Mm -hmm. With the the guy that plays uh, Hawk, mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Allen, uh, super dope dude. He, uh, yeah, he came down from New York and did uh, chemistry. And then, yeah. But from all the choices that I made with the tape, they already liked it. Right. Because I play a singer in that, too. Like, the episodes haven't come up yet. And, like, my character is, like, the lead singer of this Christian band. And he has, like, these full-out concerts and stuff. But um, Oh, sweet. That's, like, yeah. So I had to um, sing a song. It's, like, worship song that they put in the script. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had to do my scenes and stuff. And they were, like... Yeah, it was very similar to like the Glee casting process, uh, but uh, yeah, and they were just like great, and they let me have fun with it and do what I wanted to do, and kind of went from there. Yeah, I uh, I think your your character seems really cool, and I've only I'm only you know a couple episodes in on yeah. that, so I you yeah, know no you're, you're you're sort of just starting to kind of open up and see what your character is all about, but I'm excited to see like the sort of arc that your that your character will take. Yeah. When do you get the next episode? Scripts, because I've I've heard stories of people being like, you know, they get the side, they get like Game of Thrones, they get the sides and or yeah. the episode, and they're like, oh, I, I'm dying. Yeah, they're yeah, killing yeah. me off. Yep. yep. <laughs> so when do you get the next episode? That like shooting wise. Uh, what? Oh, the maybe like the week before we shoot it. Uh huh. So it's like mm, it depends on the shooting schedule, but a week and a half to maybe 
five days. It's like somewhere in that zone. Yeah. Um, uh, before we shoot it. But yeah, so we knew that our characters were like interested in each other. Mm -hmm. We didn't know which way that was gonna go because his character on the show still has a girlfriend. So it was like, that could just be like a, oh, they exchange eyes and they could play that out for a whole season of us right. never doing anything. So we were like, okay, we knew what we were potentially signing up for, but we opened the episode and we were flipping through it. And then like, we kind of like looked at each other. <laughs> we were like, do you guys have right. Do you guys have table reads or is it no, just like, we were, go? Cause we hung out all the time, right? right? So we were together when we saw the episode and we were like, like, okay, Pucker up, big ball. <laughs> I'm coming in. You got five days and I'm coming in there. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was just, it's just one of those things. And then like the next episodes after that, like you don't know what they're going to put. Right. And then like, you're like, oh, kissing again. Oh, here we are. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and then like after that, you're just like, what's happening? We don't know. But anyway, you kind of learn your character as your character's learning himself. Yeah. I guess. So on average, when you when you get the scenes mm -hmm. or when you get the, the script for the new episode, what's what's your process of preparing, you know, either the lines or, or the emotions like? Because I, I remember on Glee, uh, you had an audition and you were writing all kinds of stuff on the back of the paper. Do you still oh, do yeah. that? What is that? You know what? I don't not do that, but my acting teacher in New York told me this. They were like, you're going to be doing all that side work, side work, and eventually you're gonna understand how to do it so much you'll do it in your head and you don't need oh. to write it. So I think that's kind of what's happened because I don't like to think that I've been doing less work to prepare, but I think it's like, I just don't need to write it anymore. Like I just- Yeah, it just sort of comes natural. Yeah, you just look at it and you're like, okay, and you naturally are like, oh, why am I saying that? Like, okay, let me find out why I'm saying that. Or like, what's my drive or intention with that? Like, yeah. you're just kind of do it in your head. But before I'd write it because I was trained to and it felt like the helpful source to like get me to where mm -hmm. I needed to be. But like. I don't really write as much stuff now as much as like run it till I'm comfortable and just like more so just trust my instincts on what I'm about to do. Right. Um, do yeah. you do you like sort of memorize or know the whole episode or no. do you kind of go day by day yeah, like all right yeah. we're shooting this scene yep. let me let me master that 100 percent. they're like tomorrow you're shooting scenes 21 and 47 and i'm like great so you're like night before yep. you get it and i'm down. like let me see what those are and a lot of times you know they shoot like it might be three lines yeah for like 21 and then the other scene might be a page and a half so it's like you're never it's stuff you can memorize in like 15 minutes do you know the the episode well enough when you're shooting that you don't that you know exactly what you're coming from, or do you are you constantly looking back at the script, kind of where did I just come from? What what's you know, what was my character going that, through before this scene? That's what I that's what I'll focus on is like okay, I, I need to know this whole episode, so I need to at least read the episode, but I don't memorize stuff until the night before. But I at least know what's going on, and then uh, before like the night before when I'm going over those lines, I'll be like, what is what's before that? Like oh right, that's that. Okay. Or like on set, like obviously the directors are great about that, and I'll just be like. Wait, wait, so am I happy still to see him or am I upset? Yeah, you and they're like, off. you're happy because remember this, this, and this. And you're like, oh, right, right. Or you piss off, so, right? Yeah, they clarify it. and then yeah. so, so that's the perks of working with a good director. They yeah. kind of have your back in that. And they understand the instance. And honestly, Scripty, whoever, whoever the script supervisor is, they're really great about yeah. that. And they'll just be like, yeah, yeah, this, this, and this. And, she was like, and I don't know about every other set, but the paths, they're amazing with it. And they'll be like, so like da 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 da. And uh, because you remember in um, last week when you were shooting the scene right before this, and you're like, oh, you're right. And they okay. just sort of clarify. So mm -hmm. movie making magic right yeah. there. There's a whole bunch of people that make a gigantic magic trick Literally. look real. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's bizarre. It's fascinating. Of, of how spread out. Like, because we were shooting, at, like, we were shooting all over the place. Like, we shot episode, like, two and four first, and then went back, shot episode one and three. Oh, wow. And then did five and six, and then seven and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is for the path. This is for the path. So oh, it's wow. Like, yeah. That's interesting. It was so bizarre because I'm like, oh, wait, wait. Right now when I'm talking to Hawk, I already like him, right? Like day one. I'm like, okay, I already like him. Got it. So I'm not just meeting him. I already like yeah, him. You're, right. whoa. Yeah, you're Whoa. I wonder why they I think maybe that. Maybe it would have to do something either, either with location or the directors because I know that maybe director availability because right. the same director is on episode two and four and then the same ones on one and three. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why or how, but it worked. Interesting. Yeah. It was, it was a new experience, but thankfully I was working with amazing professionals, people who were like super chill, super awesome. And it was, they kept it super comfortable, but uh, yeah, it was a, it was a cool storyline that I was willing to tell. Yeah. Well, have you ever had like a, an on screen romance that, um, 
where it's like you know day one you show up and it's like you guys have to you have to be intimate on some level that and didn't you happen. just met them yeah that happened for a movie that i would imagine is hard that interestingly enough kind of was easier let me tell you easier why. Really? only because we hadn't built anything yet it was a christmas movie and i played like this dude in high school he was a track runner and he did coke a bunch and it was with uh, eric roberts biblical fox was my mom and so literally the first day on set um my girlfriend in the movie um her name is danielle and her real name is danielle and they introduced us on set and it's a scene from later in the movie but it was our first day there and uh they were like hey you guys meet each other boom boom and they say action oh no actually no we had a rehearsal excuse me i just skipped all that we had a blocking rehearsal with the director first time meeting the director mm -hmm. too um uh, technically not from sessions but on right set with them. On, on um Anyway, and we're there, and they're like blocking everything out, and it was a scene where we come out of the bathroom, and we're just like making out, going full force in the in, in the uh, this is first scene. school locker room. First scene we shot. It's not till like halfway through the movie, right? But yeah, so we met, and we were both like, okay, and we knew because you got your, you yeah, get your size you before get, yeah, you know and everything. But doing. I was like, shoot, I'm gonna have to. Like, but I didn't think I was gonna be able to talk to her. She was in hair and makeup, uh -huh. and I was getting dressed and everything. And the first time we met was at blocking rehearsal. Like literally, they're like, they're like hey, right, let's this, see how we go. And uh, let's just do a camera rehearsal. <laughs> First time doing lines. And I kind of like looked at the director and I was like, do you want to see? Do you want to see actually like kiss? <laughs> and then he was just like, uh, do you feel comfortable? And I was like, and I was looking at her and I was like, do you want to like practice it? I'm like, I'm good either way. Like, I'm not trying to sound like a pig. Like, I, if you want to wait, right. I can wait or whatever. Um, and she was just like, no, 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 whatever. No, no, no. Okay. So we do it. And it was just like awkward at first, but at the same time, it kind of easier because you just went for it. You just went for right it, away. and it kind of knocked the rather dust than, off. Rather than working for weeks, and knowing then that you, it's coming, knowing that it's coming. Yep, yeah, we got that out the way, and then every other scene we had kind of automatically had that tension and that like good yeah. relationship mm -hmm. because we were like, well, we already made out. The worst we're gonna do now is cuddle. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. So we just kind of got it out of the way. And yeah. You guys felt more comfortable. Yeah. That's interesting. It was a little easier to be honest. We'll be making magic again, man. You see what I'm saying? Well, dude, I uh, I really, really appreciate you coming out yeah, and, and doing the show. I hope you enjoyed the cocktail. Oh. You still got a little. You can, we can slam. That was good. Thank you. Was. Thank you for doing Heck this. Heck yeah, man. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having it. me, bro. I, I'm, a, I'm a Titus making fan. Ah! And um, I I'm cannot wait to see you. Do whatever it is you do next, man. I'm, I, I'm really, really excited to see it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and when it happens, I'll be sure to celebrate with it. Yes. Uh, we're waiting, you know? Big, big celebration. Casamigos. Casamigos. Yes. Thank Sweet. you. Thank you for doing yeah, this. Yeah, bro.